All right, full disclosure, I'm actually a pretty big Sony fan. I've been using their Discmans when I was a kid. I've been using their headphones and earbuds when I was a kid as well. And then I was always like a PlayStation kid growing up. PC, you know, number one, but PlayStation solid backup. And today we've got their M9 gaming monitor. They kind of went all out with this thing. It's 4K, 144 Hertz, 27 inches. So you've got about 160 PPI for those of you that care about pixel density. And apparently, it's got full array local dimming with 96 zones, which, you know, that's not as impressive as the like 500,000 zones we've seen on some TVs and other like really high end displays. But 96 zones on a 27 inch screen is actually not too bad. The other really cool thing about this is the stand is kind of interesting. So I'm really curious to see how it works and how it looks. Cool, so yeah, this is the weird stand I'm talking about. This part seems pretty normal, right? But apparently uh, the legs, like this is forward and then the legs go back. Power brick, giant power brick actually. Cool, one concern, there's like no cables. So we have a power cord and a power brick and the stand and then there's the panel. Am I crazy? It still kind of sucks for everyone else who buys this as a gaming monitor and not for their, like their PlayStation because like, I don't know, I kind of expect at least one HDMI or DisplayPort cable in the box. It's really not the end of the world. I do have extras, but if you're doing a first time setup or say you just moved and you sold everything and you need to buy everything again, it would be incredibly frustrating if you brought your PC with you and then you bought this monitor and then you go to hook everything up and you suddenly don't have a display cable. I'd be pissed because then I have to make a whole extra trip to the store just to buy something. Not everyone does this. Some people just do like a panel on the front, but I like their foam that they've got here. Is it? Yep. Wow, Sony's just reusing everything. For I.O., you've actually got a pretty good assortment of in-outs here. We've got a headphone jack, even though this thing has two speakers on it as well, for those of you who actually use your monitor speakers, not many of you, but hey. And then three USB-A slots, a USB-B slot, and then you've got a uh, USB-C port, which can also act as a display port. So if you go to hook up a laptop to it or something, no problem. You've got one display port and then two HDMI 2.1s, which is pretty nice when you'll use more than one. I mean, I guess you can have like your console hooked up and then you can also have your PC hooked up right at your desk or something. Oh my God, that's the same analog stick as a PS5. Is it? Wait, what? <laughs> no. This is what I'm actually surprisingly most interested in. I just think it's neat. Oh my God, is that Santa PS5? Yeah, look, it's pretty much a PlayStation. So it, it, it hooks up basically the same as majority of other monitor stands go, you just kind of hook it in and then it's on there. Just go like this, cool. Oh, so that just kind of slots on and then you've got two screws. Looks kind of weird, right? Well, let's see. Huh. Kind of works. It's not as stable as some other monitors I've seen, but the reality, actually, yeah, that kind of bothers me. Here's a more fair representation, but it's still pretty wobbly. Yeah. It's not bad. I kind of like the look of it overall. Uh, actually, I haven't even seen it from the front. Let me spin it around. I'm trying so hard to make sure my new short circuit hoodie doesn't scratch the screen. Yeah, you'd see the legs. I don't know, it's okay. I think it's kind of a weird design and I'm not like for it or against it. I guess my bigger issue is that there is like no swivel. Like all you can do is go up and down and the up and, I really don't like that at all. It's weird because if it goes down, then it also comes forward, like just a little bit, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't really get a lot of flexibility with this stand. And so therefore I would totally recommend a vase mount every single time. You're just gonna get a lot more use out of it. So as much as I don't like the stand, I do like the rest of the shell and everything. And the rest of the monitor is actually pretty good. It's 4K, 144 Hertz. One of the other nice features is that on the back of it, it's got this navigation nipple that we're big fans of, and then a dedicated power button right below. Some of the other features it has is the HDR600 to go along with the full array local dimming. It's also just got your standard G-Sync for variable refresh rate, which is always nice, especially if you're running on PS5 and it can't actually do some of the higher frame rates or refresh rates that you want it to do. The other kind of nice thing about this is that it's got about 95% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. 95% is quite a lot. And for the most part, the stuff you're gonna be watching is an SDR or BT2020, so whatever, it's fine. Cool, so let's fire this thing up and see if the 96 dimming zones are actually enough for a screen this size, but not before a word from our sponsor, Jackery. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring today's video. Their Explorer 2000 Pro Portable Power Station has enough juice to keep all your devices powered and connected. 
the massive 2,000 watt hour capacity and 2,200 watt output allows up to eight devices to be plugged in simultaneously. Jackery has a special Prime Day offer coming up on July 12th where you can save $900 on an Explorer 2000 Pro with two Solar Saga 200 watt solar panels. That's a lot of panels. Check out the Jackery Explorer 2000 Pro at the link below and make sure to bookmark their Amazon page so you're ready for that sweet, sweet Prime Day offer. A couple minor things that we notice when setting up the monitor is that the stand is actually kind of a pain in the ass. Because you can't swivel or anything like that, you've got to move the entire thing just to plug anything in. And I mean, it's just the spacing of everything too. Some of the ports are like right behind where this stand comes in. So you've got to like move it all the way up and even then it's a bit of a tight squeeze depending on which display you're trying to plug in. Otherwise, it worked pretty well out of the box. One issue is that the bezels are kind of big around the top. It's nice and thin on these outer bezels, but the inner ones just like, I don't know, that always kind of bothers me. Same with the bottom. If you've already got a plastic chin here, just raise it up, just cover that. I want my windows to go all the way to the edge of the screen. That's like my dream is a nice, like full screen display. Oh my God, what a dream is that? One of the really cool features that I do like though, that we've seen on other monitors, but haven't been able to always get it working because we kind of get products a little early at times, it's got an adjustable menu inside, like it's got its own software. So instead of having to actually use the navigation nipple, which is fine, that's actually not a terrible idea, but you can change everything with the click of a mouse. Oh my God, I love it. This is also the dream that I dream for. And I don't understand, like, look, I can just change brightness on the fly. Oh yeah. I'm a huge fan of this. You can, ch Ooh, you can change gamma and stuff. F that's really cool. This is actually really impressive. You can change the aspect ratio directly on the monitor. Give me fast response time. I don't know how much this adjusts things. Cool. Turn local dimming on, off or off high. Oh, let's check out the local dimming before I do anything. Uh, Windows HDR sucks, but you know, whatever. Yeah, the, the Villa Man, I love this test. For those of you unaware, full array local dimming is when you've got different zones on the display that act as different like dimming zones, basically. They'll either get brighter or dimmer depending on the HDR content being displayed. The problem with a lot of other like HDR 400 uh, six zone monitors is that they're usually edge lit and they're just these vertical stripes for HDR and it looks terrible. You'll have this one thing lit up, but all of your brightness is up across this whole stripe. With full array local dimming zones, what you get is like, oh, this one spec is bright in this corner. Let's brighten that one corner instead of the rest of the screen. And it's not bad. Like, so what's happening is as this moves around, each of the dimming zones will activate and become brighter or dimmer. Th this is the absolute worst case scenario to show off local dimming. And it doesn't look amazing in this kind of scenario, but the reality is when you're playing games or watching content, 12 by about eight uh, dimming zones, it's not gonna be too bad. I don't think you'll actually notice it all that much. This is HDR and there's not a ton of crazy big highlights going on, but I also don't notice any dimming zones in a good way. I'm not seeing like entire squares of brightness come on. We'll probably um, see it more in gaming. So we're gonna try gaming in a sec here. With HDMI 2.1, we're gonna get 10 bit color, 120 Hertz, 4K and without any display stream compression. Or at least I'm pretty sure it does with that bit rate. So we should be good to go. And uh, let's fire up some kind of game here. They're not great, but they're not the like worst monitor speakers I've ever heard. Yeah, like don't get me wrong, that's not very good, but like most monitor speakers kind of suck. So while these are a little tinny, they're actually not the worst I've ever listened to. As you can see, it's got RGB on the back, but the lighting is really minimal and it kind of goes directly into this um, exhaust for it on the back. So a lot of the light probably just goes in there instead of bouncing off and going against the wall or your desk or anywhere else you might hope to see the glow. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. Uh, you can totally see the flashes up here. The HDR is okay. But the reality is, unless you want really good HDR on a monitor, you're gonna be shelling out a lot of money. Um, for instance, I've just gotten my Alienware QD OLED finally, and that looks amazing when it comes to HDR content, but it also cost me an arm and a leg, so. The one other big difference though, is that this is still 4K 144 Hertz, which is pretty nice at this price point. It's about $899. So you're looking at something that is actually expensive but affordable if you're looking for a high refresh rate 4K panel. Yeah, the biggest problem is that these flashes here, they look overblown, which isn't the end of the world. It probably looks better than it normally does, 
but something with an even better HDR uh, feature is going to look much nicer, especially when you get those like much smaller dimming zones like we have on mini LED or on OLED. This is still a pretty good display though, especially at the price point. It looks pretty good on a PC, and I suspect that's what most people are gonna buy it for because the value is actually not bad for a PC monitor. But if you wanted to, it's got a bunch of uh, PS5 features like auto genre switching. So if you're watching a movie, it'll switch to a different mode. And if you go to a game, it'll switch to a different mode. Probably do stuff like turn game mode on. On top of that, it can also do variable refresh rate for your PS5, which is pretty sweet. And it's got auto HDR tone mapping for PlayStation as well, which might look really good. So we might get a much better HDR experience on our PS5. These are the cans, eh? What are these, the H9s? H9 headphones? Uh, Adam already checked these out though, and he said he really likes them, so I'm pretty excited. They seem okay. Oh, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, the following settings have been optimized. Boom, see, it's already doing the auto adjust HDR stuff. Uh, the following settings have been optimized for your TV. Make adjustments if necessary. Sweet, so then you can change it. Uh, I'm gonna, as soon as it clips it, okay, how do I want it? Press the, oh, until it's barely visible. All right, well, there it's technically barely visible. I can still just see it. No, I want the ultimate PS5 experience. I gotta keep, I gotta keep the cans on. We're gaming now, fellas. Where do I even go? The field of view is killing me. Oh, that looks pretty good. It's not super HDR-y. Oh, those device. rockets look kind of bright though. Let's, can I like boost higher than that? Oh, that flash and the lightning look pretty good though. Hold to activate. Oh, that looks cool. That's nice and bright. Yeah, this looks pretty sexy. Okay, what we really want to check out though is the actual differences that this will do on a PlayStation versus a PC and that's the auto switching stuff. So we're gonna go to media and see if it changes the mode or anything. Hey, yeah, there was some screen flicker and stuff. So when you actually change modes with a lot of these monitors or TVs, a lot of the time they won't actually tell you anything like, oh, we've changed this mode. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. Uh, but you will notice like a flicker or your screen will go dark momentarily and then it'll come back on. I think that overall $900 for a 4K, 144 Hertz, Full array local dimming with 96 zones? Like, that's not bad. I think the price point is decent, but at the end of the day, I would probably pick a different monitor personally. I don't need the pixel density of 4K at 27 inches. The KVM is a really nice feature as well if you've got, say, a laptop, but not a gaming PC but you do have a PS5, so you can have your PS5 and your laptop hooked up to the same display. I don't know if I'd buy it partially because of the stand. I think that if you do buy this thing, you should definitely just get either a wall mount or a, um, a monitor arm to put it on because I really, really don't like this stand for a number of reasons. Otherwise though, it's not bad. I think you're getting a pretty good value for it and it's probably one of the best HDR experiences you're going to get in a monitor at this price point. I think that for Sony's really first kind of foray into the gaming monitor space, it's not bad. And you should definitely include it when you're trying to figure out what monitor to buy next. And if you're trying to figure out what video to watch next, maybe look at Adam's video on the headphones that we got, the H9s. That one's pretty, these are pretty good too, apparently. Are they good, Adam? They're fine, they're pretty good, yeah. Yeah, okay. Watch the video, no, I'm not gonna tell. Yeah, there you go, watch the video, watch the video. Thanks for watching.